Shalom, everybody. My name is Jason. I'm Caden. I'm Jaden. I'm Nicole. And we are the Yahuwah and the Torah YouTube channel, and you can find us all over the place, and we are right here with you guys right now. And we are a family divided because we have a family that has taken on yet another special mission 
where it takes one of us out of this house at all times that we are basically having to readjust every last aspect of our life to keep a couple of very old people alive. And these old people we've known for 10 years and they came down here and they have no family, they have no nothing, they have no, no support system and they don't have financial ability to bring people in to help them. And so for the last few months, we've watched them basically go downhill to no, no help, no, no way to, to do anything. And um, the last hit this old gentleman did was he was walking down this very steep thing, fell down, smashed the concrete against his face. He has two black eyes. His arms are all messed up. There's giant holes in his flesh. His knees are all messed up. And so we decided enough was enough and that these people were absolutely not able to take care of themselves anymore. And so for the last week or so, we've been in and out of the hospital getting them there. One of us stays there at all times of the night and it is crazy because we have nine pit bulls. And so we are um, stressing our house out quite a bit to make this happen. But our creator is a wonderful creator. He has blessed us with the abilities to do these things. and. We are not the family who's gonna sit around and watch these people uh, crumble. This is, this is not anything we can do. And so this is, a, um, this is a different Shabbat and it is probably going to be a different Shabbat from here on out. Um, I will be doing my own production per se. And um, there's only the four of us, which is very, very strange in our house. So we are the family who believes that the laws, statutes and commandments of our creator that are found in Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers and Deuteronomy are the rules for all of our lives. They are everything that we should absolutely embrace. They are the ways of the future. They are the ways of the kingdom. And they are our ways right now. And our creator has said for all generations, I would like you guys to be obedient to me. And that's what our creator has asked of us. And in return, he has given us life he has given us blessings. He's given us supernatural messengers to watch us. He has given us a way to the kingdom. He gave us a life of his son that we are able to break that curse of the spiritual aspect of the Torah. It's that second death that our, the son of the most high has given to us that we don't have to have that second death. Most of us will probably all have to walk through this physical death, but we don't have to be sent away. We don't have to be a place to a place of gnashing of teeth and where the worms never, never end and where your, your body is just in a state of despair. So this is what we believe we have found what is close to the path to the kingdom and the path to the kingdom isn't in 41,000 different religions. In fact, I have never found a single religion that actually corresponds with the words of scriptures. 41,000 of them all have their ways. They all have their days of worship and the days of worship and what they do and how they do are contrary to scriptures. Now, if we're trying to align our lives to what scriptures say, because we're looking for a way out of this place at the end, well, it's not going to be in the hands of these preachers in these 501c3 churches that are, that are taking people for 10% of their money in an unbiblical fashion there as well. So Jade, let us get on. Actually, Cade, let pray for us, if you will. Personally, Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for your Shabbat. And we thank you for your rest, the day you have set apart for us. We ask that your Ruach HaKodesh is on us today as we dive into your word, as we find what you have written, as we find what you have put before us, as we go into your son's words and what he said. And we ask that we find what you want us to find today, that we are able to understand and comprehend the words of the Torah, the words of your son. We thank you for all. In his name, amen. All right, and if you guys, um, if you guys can lift these, this old couple up in prayer, um, it's Marlene and Fred are their names, and um, Dr. Fred is just turning 90 on today. today. Shabbat, he turned 90 today, and I think his wife is like 90 something. She's, she's 92. 90. She's, eight she's 92. Old. Eight months older than him. No, she's 90. 90. As well. Okay, so she's 90 <laughs> as well. And um, I think she weighs about 74 pounds or yeah, something. She's, tiny. she's extremely light. Um, prior to Boss Clan getting there, they hadn't been eating very well. So we were providing all food, everything that, that we can possibly do, trying to regain the strength of these, this older couple so that they aren't just. Um, their demise isn't such a, a horrible, horrible demise. And they are hardcore Christians, guys. They are hardcore Christians. They found the way. Um, they're all saved. It's only Jesus. And the, we talk to them. We minister to them. 
and they are hard, hard core. So our job is not simply just trying to keep them alive, but our job is trying to keep them spiritually alive. And when you get to that age um, of maturity, everybody has already found the way. And it's like uh, it's like a super, super Christian when you get that old. You, there's no other way. There's no other patterns. And they are not interested in the commandments of our creator at all. I am just glad that I am not Yahuwah. I am glad that I have no part of the judgment of the people to come because I don't know how I would judge these people because they, you know, they're nice people, right? They're, 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 they're nice people, but nice people don't make the kingdom according to Matthew 7. And so we have to be very, very, very careful on our own paths, our own walks that we are aligning our lives up with scriptures so that we are able to find this kingdom when the kingdom is here. But like scriptures say, most people don't find the kingdom. Many, many are called very few are selected. And so we are the people that are trying to strive with the very, very best that we can and to take what our creator has said and adjust our lives to this fashion. So Jade, will you please um, give us Deuteronomy 6, please. Hear, O Yisrael, Yahuwah Elohim, Yahuwah is one. You shall love Yahuwah, your Elohim, with all your heart, with all your being, and with all your might. And these words I am commanding you today shall be in your heart, and you shall impress them upon your children. And shall speak of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up. You shall bind them to the side on your hand, and they shall be flung between your eyes, and you shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. Yeah, and this is, we, we always open this up with the Shema, guys. And I, I, you know, it's, a Shema simply means hear and obey, right? It's a two thing, right? It's not just, a, it's not that we're told to just listen up, this is what it is. But we're also told to obey this in this simple Shema. And the majority of the world, if you look at the way they look, they absolutely don't love our Elohim with, with all their heart or with all their being or with all their might. And we have a commandment inside of these, these very limited words that we have right here. The commandment is that we, we need to be writing these words on the hearts of, our, of ourselves. We have to impress them upon the hearts, minds, and souls of our children. We speak of them when we sit in the house and we when we walk by the way, right? Also, when we lie down, when we get up, right? Put them as a uh, the front. Let's be, be between your eyes. You can't, if you obeyed this Shema right here, there's absolutely no way you would walk into this world Torahless. If you love the creator of the universe with all your heart, mind, and soul, then you're going to love his words with all your heart, mind, and soul. And when you say the laws are gone or abandoned or have been, uh, Messiah died for, so that we don't have a, a set of guidelines anymore, that's foolish talk. That's not what is in scriptures. That goes against the words of our Messiah. And when people tell you that the laws are gone, that not only is like satanic, it is demonic, and it is, it is a spell that most people are under because they have been programmed into this big bad R word, which is called religion. And these, this religion is what takes people constantly and they, they get owned. And so we are the few, the uh, small amount of people that have been called. And if you are obeying his laws, statutes, and commandments, that means then we are on the right path. But even then, salvation is never guaranteed, right? Salvation is something we need to uh, get to with trembling, with humbleness, with no pride, with hands cling, hearts cling, all of this. All right. So, guys, what we're going to do right now um, after Miss Nicole goes over um, all of our brothers and sisters um, on this stuff, we are going to go over these amazing, tremendous, spectacular laws of our creator. Miss Nicole, who uh, do we have? We have Cindy LJ and Tess, her mom. Hi, hi, ladies. And Ollie, but she's not there. Whenever we'll Ollie's there, Ollie. give Ollie a big, big hug from all of us, sis. Candy and Ruby. Hi, hi, ladies. Jeremy and Callan. What's up, guys? Uh, Jeannie, not of this world. Hi. Graham. Let's see. Irma. Sarah Baker. Sister Barb. Katrina, Quentin, and Claudia. Hi. Uh, Elizabeth, Mama C.A., and I think that's everybody. If I missed anybody, I'm sorry. Amazing. But Irma does have a question. What's up, Irma? If someone died and never knew the true word of Yahuwah, will they be commended? Commended or condemned? What? Condemned, sorry. Um, I don't know. That's why I say I'm glad I'm not, I'm not the creator of the universe. Uh, the, thing, the thing about the book of the Nazarene that I'm still reading this, I'm still telling everyone everybody should read about it and read it, 
because there's things inside of that that will dial us in to a better understanding of what the Torah is. And in the book of the Nazarene, Messiah very clearly warns us that we don't look at one set of the Torah and make judgments based upon it without understanding the entire set of the Torah. It's not just one particular piece. It's not just one commandment. We have to look at life through the eyes of the entire Torah. That is why when we hear that people are Christians, the first thing we absolutely know is that Christians are a, a dangerous group of people. And before you guys start picking up the rocks and tomatoes and chucking them here, hear me out. When you are in any religion that you believe that the laws of our creator don't apply to you anymore, that means you do not have a moral compass. You don't have a moral guide. You don't have a way of understanding. Ignorance is not going to be bliss when we're standing in the fire. We, as humans, have been given many, 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 many chances to seek our creator. Those who are looking for our creator oftentimes find the path to our creator based upon the ways that our creator has put people in there, right? Our creator knows everything. He knows what you need to see in your life to plant those seeds and the seeds have been planted, right? We are, we as humans are smart enough to either accept there's a creator of the universe and seek him and seek our hearts and align our, our lives into that direction, or we can just not care. And for those who just don't care, I don't think there's going to be any kind of, any kind of, uh, you know, mercy on when it comes to that. However, I don't know. And that is why, again, I am glad I am not a judge. I'm not a ruler on this. I am nobody. I'm a peasant sitting out in the middle of the jungle that I'm screaming at all of you guys that we should be seeking this better way, that we should be seeking the laws of our creator. And uh, I, I, I don't, I don't know. I, I just don't, I don't know what our Messiah, Messiah and his dad are going to do. Like for instance, these, these really old people, they are very, very nice people. They are very, very aged. They live to the, the ripe age of 90 years old. And in our time, that's, that's a pretty good age to live to. But their, their fridges are full of pork. <laughs> which we've been sticking to the trash. There was some pork downstairs. Uh, we dumped that in the trash. It looked expired to me, so I tossed that in the trash. It didn't look good. So those are the kind of things that, but they, but they love their pork, right? And they don't, they don't care. They don't care about the laws of our creator. And when you bring them up, they're like, Jesus got rid of all the laws. And I don't, it's like talking to anybody about this. Their eyes glaze over and that, that programming comes right back into effect. And by their own ways, they're, they're battling this. So I don't know. I don't know. I mean, there's got to be some kind of jungle villages out in the middle of nowhere where nobody has ever heard of our Messiah. And um, they're going to have to go to judgment based upon that. So I, I don't know. Uh, so I guess that's the answer to that one. I just don't know. Now, what we're going to do, guys, is we're going to go over these laws, statutes, and commandments. These are the, these are the life force of all of us. In fact, it can enhance your life so much that when you are keeping these laws, statutes, and commandments, number one, we don't eat improperly, right? We don't eat the, th the foods of the Gentiles. We don't eat the stuff that, um, you know, I heard it the other day. Somebody was like, oh, pork's okay to eat now because science has come so far that we understand a little bit about it, right? That's the, that's the excuse that people have. Oh, Jesus made the, all the pork cling and everything else. But yet that same concept and that same logic is, why, when grandpa dies, why don't they just put grandpa in the stew pot, right? Let's just put grandpa in there. That's a little extra meat. We can boil that down and then we can have some soup, right? Grandpa soup. Um, if we're eating unclean foods, what stops us from eating all of this other stuff, right? We have a set of guidelines that specifically tells us clean and unclean foods. And one of the, one of the things that isn't in there is human beings, because I don't think there was ever a concept, right? There's nothing that says we should or shouldn't eat it. We absolutely should not eat humans. They're, they're not clean, right? That's, that's. The, I guess the logic that we have to have, if it doesn't say that, we absolutely shouldn't be eating it. But it does tell us about pork, and it tells us all about this stuff, and we shouldn't be eating it. So, as we go through these laws, statutes, and commandments right here, this is what we're supposed to write on our heart, mind, and soul. This would be the frontlets between our eyes. And our apologies also for all the, this, the knocking on the roof. You guys, I've shown you guys the rooftop before. It's, it's one of these things we can't do much about. So you'll have to bear with us and uh, pretend it's rain, pretend it's something peaceful, and uh, away we go. Number one, Torah command, be fruitful. Number two, multiply, replenish the earth. 
So do it. Had a meal with a fish, fowl, and every living creature. The earth burying every tree is for food. Man and woman should build their own families. Master sin. Every clean moving thing that lives shall be food for you. Do not eat the blood. Slow down, gentlemen. Walk before me and be perfect. The God who is covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. Reiterated, guys. Look at that. For those of you who are new to this, these readings, there is no commandment anywhere in scriptures that is as big as this. Now, what is this command? It says, guard Yahuwah's covenant, laws, statutes, and commandments. It's the same thing. If somebody tells you to guard your family, guard your kids, right? You're not gonna let uh, some old dude grab a hold of your kids and take off of them, right? Right before your eyes. That's the same thing. You have to guard these laws the same that you're guarding your family because this will guard your family. These laws will keep you protected. They will keep your kids from rising up and becoming rebellious rebels doing horrible, horrible things. But we it doesn't just happen. We have to embrace ourselves into this. We have to wash our lives with this. We have to wash our hearts with this. It has to be everything in our lives. It can't just be um, a, 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 a willy-nilly thing that it doesn't... It, it doesn't work. We're guarding means guarding, guys. And that's very, very important. There's no other commandment as big as that. All right. Every male shall be circumcised at eight days old. Teach your children commands and guard the way of Yahuwah. Remember Yahuwah's name for all generations. Keep the Passover, Pesach. Keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread, Festival of Massah. There's one Torah for the Hebrew, or one Torah for the stranger and the Hebrew. Okay. And what, what we mean by this is, is what this command is. Guys, it doesn't matter what religion you guys have wandered in from to this channel it doesn't, or to, to anything. It doesn't matter what indoctrination you have been indoctrinated with. Guys, indoctrination is, is a, a, a very relevant thing in this world. All of us are completely indoctrinated. People take their kids and they, they grow them up and they, they celebrate Christmas and Thanksgiving and Easter and all of these pagan, these pagan days. And they don't know, right? But when you know, when you come to understand that there is one law for whoever you are, it doesn't matter where you come from, it doesn't matter your creed, it doesn't matter your race, it doesn't matter anything about it, there's one law. And this is the laws that we are reading right here. They don't change, they, they didn't change when our Messiah died on the tree, right? None of this, that was not the point of this. He did not die on the tree so that we didn't have to obey the laws of our creator. That is part of that programming. Okay, sanctify all firstborn to Yahuwah. There are no mighty ones before Yahuwah. You shall not make graven images. Do not bring Yahuwah's name to not. Keep the Shabbat. Honor your parents. Okay, guys, take a look at the Shabbat. You know, you're, you're seeing all these commands, right? You're seeing all these things, how they add up, how they line up. Shabbat is one of these things that is loaded, right? There's a lot of commands in this, and there's a tremendous more commands in the extracurricular books. And so when we're talking about a day of rest, a day that is the beginning of Sabbath keeping, of the beginning of Torah keeping, this is it. This is a very easy command that we can all dial in. This is a command that absolutely adjusts our life and aligns us into the path of our creator. It's a day that our creator has given to mankind because mankind should not be working seven days a week. And so when we do work seven days a week, not only are we breaking commandments of our creator, but we're breaking his health codes. The health code needs man to have a day of rest. And by us keeping this commandment, we are absolutely going to live longer, most likely. And we're also going to be in covenant with our creator. Because people don't understand that we're on a Sabbath day. What do we do on the Sabbath day? Well, we can read scriptures, we can rest, we can eat, we can relax, we can get our bodies back in, 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 in a working fashion, and we can get ready to grind the rest of this week, right? The next starting on, on the, the day of the sun, the Sol Victus, that's day one of our creator's calendar. Continuing on, honor your parents. Do not kill. Do not break wedlock. Do not steal. Do not make false accusations against your neighbor. Do not covet anything of your neighbors. Do not make an altar from rock that tool is touched. Do not go up to the altar by the steps. When a man steals cattle, he shall restore it five times. Then who is laws for criminals? Do not lie with beasts. Do not sacrifice to other Elohim. Do not oppress a stranger, fatherless, or widow. Do not charge your brother interest. If you borrow your neighbor's raiment, return to him before sunset. 
Do not curse the ruler of your people. Do not eat with torn of any beast. No false report. Do not follow a multitude of evil. Do not judge unrighteously against the poor. Bring back your enemy's cattle if you find it going astray. Help the animals of your enemy. Stay away from rumors and gossipers. Take no bribes. Do not oppress, or oppress the stranger, love the stranger. Be real and rest in the seventh year. Do not mention any pagan names. Keep the feast of Yahuwah. Do not cook your goat in his mother's milk. That is the land. Do not make on all person. Do not eat the fat. Do what you say you're going to do. Turn away your neighbors. Obey Yahuwah's dietary laws. Women's time of separation. Obey Yahuwah's hygiene laws. The Day of Atonement, Yom HaKibarim. Do not uncover the nakedness of your family. Do not take your woman's sister for wife. Do not lie to the woman in her uncleanness. No, you should not sacrifice children in Moloch. Do not be a sodomite. Be Kodesh. Do not reap the corners of your field, or you should not glean your vineyard. Do not deal falsely to fraud your neighbor. Do not lie, or be a liar. Pay your workers for the day's wage they are due. Do not harm the disabled. Do not endanger your neighbor. Do not, uh, do not hate your brother. Rebuke your neighbor for his sin. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do not ever shoot cattle. Do not mingle your seed. Do not mingle in and wool. Do not lie with a taken woman. Do not eat the fruit of the trees for three years. Do not practice sorcery. Do not round your beard or the corners of your head. Do not cut yourself with the dead. Do not get tattoos. Do not prostitute your daughter. Do not defile your temple. Do not consult the medium. Respect your elders. Have correct weights and measures. Do not walk in the manners of the nation. Keep the feast of first fruits, Shavuot, Pentecost, the overcount. Keep the feast of trumpets, Yom Terah. Keep the feast of Sukkot, Shemni Asaret. If you bless in the name of Yahuwah, you shall be put to death. If you kill your neighbor's animal, he must give him another. Repay injury for injury. Honor the Obel, the Jubilee year. Confess your sins to Yahuwah and repay who you have trespassed against. The law of being a Nazir. Where is easy on the four corners of your garments. The Torah of whoever touches a corpse. Follow Yahuwah's law of inheritance. The Torah of keeping your oath to Yahuwah. Do not add or take away from the word. Guard your soul. Learn to fear Yahuwah. You shall love Yahuwah with all your heart. Find the laws upon your hand and the front between your eyes. Write the laws on your doorposts. Do not tempt Yahuwah. Do what is right and good in the sight of Yahuwah. Do not be afraid of your enemies. Remember Yahuwah. Circumcise your heart. Cleave Yahuwah. Swear by his name. Destroy grave images. Do not make an all idol of Yahuwah as a pagan to their Elohim. Rejoice not Yahuwah has blessed you with. Do not do what is right in your own eyes. Do not hearken to the words of the false prophets. Do not make any baldness between your eyes for the dead. You shall not eat any baldness thing. You shall give to a stranger clean food that dies of itself, but you shall not eat of it. You have tithe of your increase of seed year by year. The law is the end of seven year release. Do not borrow from the nations. Do not harden your, your heart nor shut your hand from the poor. Guard must one of Yahuwah's calendar. Three times a year all males shall appear before Yahuwah. You shall make judge and officers in all your gates. Do not plant ashar poles near the altar. There must be two or three witnesses. Hearken unto the prophet Yahuwah has chosen. The prophet test of Deuteronomy. Do not remove your neighbor's property line. How to deal with a false witness among Torah keepers. The first child is the adult portions. Your brother's cattle or clothes are lost, and you find them, you must return them. A woman should not wear what pertains to a man, nor a man wear what pertains to a woman. You find a bird's nest with the babies. Oh, with the mother and the babies. Or eggs, take the babies, but not the mother. If you build a flat a new house with a flat roof that they lived on, you must put a railing around it. Do not be a prostitute. Do not use dirty money. Law of divorce. Do not take a person's millstone for a pledge. If you lend to your brother, do not enter his house to get your payment. He must bring it to you. Return his clothing before sunset if that was a pledge. Do not oppress a hired servant as poor and needy. Every man should put to death for his own sin. Do not go back to the cotton sheep in the field, leave for the stranger, fatherless and widow. Do not molest your ox when he treads out grain. If your brother dies and has no child, you shall take his wife and in the firstborn after your brother. At the end of seven years, you are to read the Torah at the Feast of Sukkot. Okay. All right. Thank you very, very much. Uh, we are doing this production thing here. All right. So here we are. Um, Kate, I had it. I was just going on. I was reading the rest of your stuff here. So it's okay. We're, at, we're having a, a little difficulty here because we are now the production guy. Eli is our production dude that actually runs all of this. And so with him being gone, um, we're learning some new trades here as we are rolling through this. Okay. Now, we are, um, yeah, don't be a prostitute. Um, it's, it's, that, it's that whole adult. Don't be an adulterer. Don't make somebody else an adulterer. It's not just a single act when it, whenever it is, like prostitution, every time that's, and that's, that's men and women. And men are, I, I mean, I, I, 
<laughs> I don't I don't have the right word for it. I, I, I think slut is the right word. Men and women of today are extreme sluts. It doesn't matter what they are or who they are. The the it is a very, very sick world that we live in right now. And um, I, I'm sure it's, it's you know, a, a lot of times the women are the ones that get like uh, beat on the when it comes to prostitution. But every single man is, is, is as bad as any any woman. I mean, it's just it's a it's a two way street on this whole thing. And it's all evil in the sight of our um, in the sight of our creator. Right. And that's not what he wants us to do. Our, our creator is about being faithful. Our creator is about building families is about um, putting together something that is that is long term. And so when we're out there whoring ourselves and, and defiling other people and defiling ourselves, it's things that absolutely you cannot do. And that's why we have the rules in the Torah of adultery, right? If you are in a marriage and you have a, if you cheat on your husband or wife, that marriage is completely gone, right? You are not to go back to that spouse or you have done further damage than what you have. So this is why the prostitution thing is, is very important that we understand. We need to keep our clothes on. As people of our creator, it's, it's better we were eunuchs and not sexually active than we are out there um, making other people adulterers and making ourselves adulterers and, and just making things far worse. Not to mention all the, the STDs they have out these days. I mean, there's, there's a ton of them. And that's why being faithful and not cheating is a very good idea, if not um, you know, the absolute best idea. Jade, will you tell us a little bit? Scoot up here so you can these guys can hear you on this. We are at right now. We've been through the book of Genesis. We are now on our uh, into Leviticus. Who's doing what? What's happening? And um, put it down, please. Uh, well, the temple has been built. The people uh, are, are now Levites are now learning about sacrifices. They've been ordained. They got some um, oil and blood splashed on them, so they were anointed. They are now the chosen people. So we have learned all about their sacrifices and what to do when people do certain sins and what kind of they have to sacrifice. And we are still learning about sacrifices and the children and the Levites having to do with their sacrifices. Yeah. Okay. All right. So here we are into Leviticus. What did, what did Sister Barb have to say on that? I miss that. Um, she says, had to learn that literally everything to ask if it is of Torah. All of this world is defiled. We are all... All we were taught before. Yeah, absolutely. We, we all, most of us, I mean, grew up in lies. If you guys had Torah observant parents that are really tour, truly Torah observant, you would be a very, very minority of a group of people. Um, all of our parents are straight Gentiles, happy, raging Gentiles. They're, they're cool with it. Um, Christian as they can be for my mom. And uh, they, they just, they don't care what the heart, mind, and soul of our creator has requested that we, we do and how we behave. So here we are. Leviticus 9, everybody. And on the eighth day, it came to be that Moshe called Aaron and his sons and the elders of Yisrael. And he said to Aaron, take for yourself a young bull as a sin offering and a ram as a burnt offering, a perfect one, and bring them before Yahuwah. And speak to the children of Yisrael, saying, take a male goat as a sin offering and a calf and a lamb, both a year old, perfect ones as a burnt offering. And a bull and a ram as peace offerings to slaughter before Yahuwah, and a grain offering mixed with oil. For today, Yahuwah shall appear to you. Okay, um, anyone have anything? We're, we're dealing with it. We have uh, eighth day, right? We have Moshe and Aaron. We're talking, we need to take a young bull um, and a ram, a perfect one, um, ages. But gentlemen, what do you say on this? It's a year old. Yeah, yeah. Everything just, it's a year old and everything. It's young. Old. And so what would a, how big do you think a uh, year old lamb is going to be? Well, I assume it's going to be quite big. I assume it's going to be quite big, but it's not going to be a full grown up, full grown up around two years. I don't think so. You know, even a one year old cow isn't that big. And we have two goats, and they're very small. These yeah, things are like, like extremely small. And they're like, two. yeah, they're, they're two years? Almost, in January, they'll be two, I think. We'll yeah, so these things are pretty, pretty small is, is what we're, we're talking about here. Okay. Uh, five. And they took what Moshe commanded before the tent of appointment, and all the congregation drew near and stood before Yahuwah. And Moshe said, this is the word which Yahuwah commanded you to do, so that the esteem of Yahuwah appears to you. Okay, this is a very important word, right? This is what our creator wants us to do so that he will walk and dwell with us in this fashion, right? And a lot of people don't understand the entire sacrificial system. They don't under, they just see it as some bloodbath or some, some crazy creator that's just killing out of everything. What people have to understand is this was the way that our creator would allow for atonement of sin so that he, 
we're cling enough that he would walk with us, right? Because we are a filthy people that make a lot of very bad decisions, especially when it comes to Torah. And it doesn't take much to break Torah. It does not take. It takes negative thoughts. It takes evil. It takes bypassing a stranger when you could love that stranger. There's a lot of things. We judge for the things we do not do as well as the things and so that is, uh, again, things that you don't get out of a lot of the other scriptures. But out of the book of the Nazarene, that is very much the case. Okay. Um, and Moshe said to Aaron, go to the altar and prepare your sin offering and your burnt offering and make atonement for yourself and for the people. And make the offering of the people and make atonement for them as Yahuwah has commanded. So Aaron came near to the altar and slaughtered the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. And the sons of Aaron brought the blood to him, and he dipped his finger in the blood and put it on the horns of the altar and poured the blood at the base of the altar. And the fat and the kidneys and the appendage on the liver of the sin offering, he burned on the altar as Yahuwah had commanded Moshe. And the flesh and the skin he burned with fire out of the camp. Okay, now this is the same setup that we've had in the other chapters, right? The same kind of stuff we put on the altar. We have the fat, we have the kidneys, we have the appendage. Um, we have some some other things, but we also have the flesh and skin and probably the as well. So it's the same process and same procedure for different things. So it's not exactly complex like our creator. If we were in this system, if we were a Levitical priest doing this, once we do the routine, I, I think it would be a pretty much a, just a process. Okay. Uh, 12. And he burnt the and he slaughtered the burnt offering and the sons of Aaron presented to him the blood which he sprinkled on the altar all around. And they presented the burnt offering to him with his pieces and head, and he burned them on the altar. And he washed the entrails and the legs and burned them with the burnt offering on the altar. And he brought the people's offerings and took the goat, which was the sin offering for the people, and he slaughtered it and made it a sin offering, like the first one. And he brought the burnt offering and made it according to the right ruling. He also brought the grain offering and filled his hand with it and burned it on the altar besides the burnt offering of the morning. And he slaughtered the bull and the ram as peace offerings, which were for the people. And Aaron's sons presented to him the blood, which he sprinkled on the altar all around. And the fat from the bull and the ram, the fat tail and the covering and the kidneys and the appendage on the liver. And they placed the fat on the breast and he burned the fat on the altar. And again, a lot of people don't understand. We have a commandment that says, do not eat the fat. And we see over and over and over in these scriptures that our creator enjoys certain smells. And for those who think that we're, you know, uh, a bunch of monkeys on a spinning water ball 50 kabillion galaxies away and that our creator obviously has all these other earths and all these other things and we're just a, an anomaly out in the middle of something spinning around. That's not what this says. It clearly says that the earth is the foundation, it is the footstool of our creator. And if he's sitting there enjoying the sweet savor, the same kind of savor that if we go into a, a steak shop, right? Or smell that steak. That's what our creator is, is, is understanding. And so we are created in his, um, in his, um, in his form of his image, right? If, if we can smell these wonderful, great smells. Um, and yeah, like, like someone in there said, it's a barbecue, right? It is the sweet savor. And if we, that's what our creator wanted from us, right? It's not this this bloodletting, kill all the animals, do all this kind of stuff. And when people get very, very confused because people do not read the scriptures. And so they just look at this and they go, oh yeah, that's why the laws are dead because our creator, uh, he, was, he was crazy, right? He was out there killing all these animals and that's not the way it is. But in a world that walks amongst human beings in either a fire or a cloud by day, that's how he wanted us to act. That's the only way that he would walk with us because we keep doing very bad things. And Israel as a people, all of us as a people, have never come back under this covenant. And that's why Israel had all these issues. That's why they've always had these issues. Uh, 21, right, fellas? Yep. Okay, but the breasts and the right thigh, Aaron waved as a wave offering before Yahuwah as Moshe had commanded. Aaron then lifted up his hand toward the people and Barak them and came down from making the sin offering and the burn offering and the peace offerings. And Moshe and Aaron went from into the tent of appointment and came out and Baruch blessed the people and the esteem of Yahuwah appeared to all the people. And fire came out from before Yahuwah and consumed the burnt offering and the fat on the altar. People saw and cried aloud and fell on their faces. Wow. 
Guys, this is a this is a, a big thing, right? I mean, we don't see these kind of things in this day and age, right? We don't see anything like this. We know our creator's out there. We know he's waiting for us. We know there's a kingdom. And in this kingdom, guys, we're gonna be bringing back probably sacrifices would be my guess, definitely, all of the appointed times. Passover, Feast of Trumpets, uh, Sukkot, all of these same things that we have been told and that we have been told to, to obey, Shema, hear and obey, we're going to go into this kingdom. And when we read through the book of the Nazarium, it scares me, guys. The book of the Nazarium scares me personally because it, I, it reveals to me all of my downfalls, all of these things where I'm like, uh, I've always taken the Torah and I'm like, this is what it is right here. We cannot cross this. We cannot do this. And when we read the book of the Nazarium, it's a lot like that, but we have to understand all of the Torah to make these right decisions. We can't make certain judgments based on certain things. We have to have the entire Torah, which is why we are told to write the Torah on our heart, mind, and soul, right? That's why we have Deuteronomy 6. That is what our Shema is. And if we don't have Torah written on our hearts, if we don't understand the, the, the way our creator wants us to function and act, that's up to us. And we are going to be the, the ones who pay that price. And this is why we are always out there, guys, begging people to read this Torah, to, to love this Torah, to fall in love with it. Guys, there's, there's a, no greater love in your life than the Torah that our creator has given to us. There's, even life of itself without the Torah isn't a blessing, right? Because we would go into abomination, but yet our creator has given us a way out. And if we will simply obey his voice, obey what he says, write it on the heart, mind, and souls of our kids and our family and make it part of our life, that's the way forward. And again, it doesn't guarantee salvation. There's, there's no such, there's no verses anywhere I've ever found in scriptures where, where salvation is guaranteed. That once saved, always saved uh, hoax that we've all heard about, that's not biblical. That just does not involve scriptures. Okay, now we are heading over to another amazing book, and it is Matthew 9. And for those of you guys who are, um, Jade's taking off because he doesn't want to do a recap, Okay, go ahead and do a recap real quick on this. So we have Yahushua, he was born. He was born in a manger. And we had him meet John the Baptist. And he, when he met John the Baptist, he was baptized. And he went out and he started, when he started his ministry. He is now healing and he is teaching. And he's now running into the Pharisees. Now running into his biggest opposition of people, which is the Pharisees. Yeah, and you know, I will, I will point something out again, like I have learned from the book of the Nazarene, that what Messiah said, I've, I've always gone into the book of Matthew with, with the Pharisees and the Sadducees as being bad, right? Being completely bad. And I don't think that is the case. And as I read and as I study the book of the Nazarene, Messiah says that the, the, the Pharisees kind of took over the job of the Nebian, the prophets. And not all of them, according to what Messiah says, have issues. But he says there's definitely ones with issues. And so that's something I learned from the book. And I've always, um, when people say, you know, Pharisees or Sadducees, I've always looked at that as people that just take the law and do completely other things. But I, I don't believe that is the right understanding. I believe that everybody was seeking this. And they definitely had the Pharisees that rewrote their own laws, right? You have a group of people and when you bring in what they call the oral law or the Talmud, the Mishnah, and all of these outside things, guys, those things don't, they didn't come to us until after Babylon. And a lot of, a lot of what they call the oral Torah, um, when you read the oral Torah, especially a book called the Sanhedrin, there's all sorts of stuff in there that, that go against Torah. One, one of three-year-old children. Now that's when people are like, are, and I'm like, no, I'm not Jewish. Um, I, I'm a Bible guy, right? I, I, I love the, the, from the front of the book to the end of the book, but if we bring into it by default, we are breaking Deuteronomy four too, right? We're not supposed to add or take away from it. And so they have tons and tons. I mean, there's, there's hundreds of books in this oral Torah and they are not things that are good. And my apologies, my dog just came flying in. So that is the, uh, that is the breaks here with having nine dogs. So we're settling them down and we're getting ready to read. Sorry, guys, for the distractions on this. Okay, here we go. Matthew 9. And entering into a boat, he passed over and came to his own city. We're talking about Messiah, Messiah Yahushua. And for those who do not know who Yahushua is, I am talking about Jesus 
Christ. I'm talking about Jesus, who they called Jesus. There were no J's in Hebrews, guys. The letter J was not invented till the years 1500. It's like 1529 when we actually had a J. There was absolutely no J in the Hebrew alphabet. And so there, there's no way our Messiah would have ever been called Jesus. And so if you're looking for only the, the only name under heaven by which men may be saved, and we got the wrong name, we got the son of Zeus, and we're saying that even if we, we even if we we don't know, it's it, when we do know, we should change it, right? And I know a lot of folks, I, I, I don't know if it's Yahushua, Yeshua, or something very, very close to that, but it's very much closer than the word Jesus. And so when we're talking about Yahushua, which is Matthew is kind of his book, um, that's that's who I'm talking about. All right, I'm checking out chat real quick. Um, what did Sister Rose say on that last thing? Jerusalem and Babylonian. They're yeah. different. Okay. Always, always interesting stuff from Sister Barb. Okay, here we are. Uh, verse 2 it says, it says, his name shall be called Emmanuel. You know, that's an actual, that is a, uh, that's an actual mistranslation on that entire Isaiah 7. When you actually look through, um, which was it? Uh, yeah, the Septuagint. When you look, reread that into the Septuagint, because a lot of people will go for that verse and they will say, hey, Jesus is God. They will say, Yahushua is Yahuwah. But I, I will tell you from the beginning of the book to the end of the book and all the, the extra books, there is no such thing. Um, Messiah very clearly says that he is the, the son and he is taking on all of his orders and all of his things from the dead. And so <clears throat> that is one of these things that, that in indoctrination, um, I don't know how to actually fix that because majority of religion believes that the two are one. And, you know, that takes us back to Nimrod, Tammuz, Samaramus, uh, or Samaramus as, as the wife and then Tammuz as, as the son, right? The father, the son, and then, then the, uh, the mystical child. So there's, there's a lot of pagan stuff in this. And so the father is the father, the son is the son, the father gave the son as the ultimate sacrifice. And the son always comes saying he's calling in his father's name, he's doing all of his stuff. And we have to look at it like this. If we're okay with our Messiah being a filthy liar, that he would be the father and the father's the son and they're hoaxing us throughout all these books, that breaks Torah, right? That breaks the exact same foundational functional belief that our creator has given to us. I do not believe the creator of the universe is going to hoax us and I don't believe he's going to die at the hands of Hasatan himself. I believe he allowed his son to be that ultimate sacrifice, to be that, that prized lamb for us but it's not the father the father didn't die and it's very very important that we know this because a lot of people will pray to messiah and we don't have a single scriptures anywhere that says we should be praying to the ruach hakodesh the holy spirit or to anyone other than yahuwah and so all we have is we have the words of, of the son we have the words of scriptures and we have to look at everything in a whole we can't take a single verse and go look that says this we, we had to research it if, if those are the questions. And I don't know if I actually got that right. She uh, has another question. All right, hit it. She says, Yehoshua says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Yeah, absolutely. And then that's very, very true. Take a, take a look at this, guys. Right now, we're taking care of some really old folks, right? Uh, Fred and Marlene. And they have known me for about 10 years. And now that they are to the point of almost bedridden, can't move around, I have sent my son. I have sent my son and my son represents me. And I could say the same thing to Dr. Fred Marlene. If you have seen me, you have seen the father, right? My kids are out there doing the will of, of what I am wishing them to do. Before our creation, before our creator and his son were together. In fact, it popular books that the Torah, the, the, the entire laws of our creator were built before creation. They knew this probably thousands of years before our creator ever took the light and the dark and separated and did all this kind of stuff. They knew, they walked it. Messiah was not a brand new entity under creation. Wherever Messiah was, whatever realm they live in, whatever world they are in, they knew each other. The father and the son, the son grew up with the father. He knows his wishes. And that is why when the son came and walked the Torah perfectly, he was literally, the Torah made flesh because it's like me sending my son to these old people's houses. If my son would not pick them up when they fall or would, or would not take care of them or would not feed them, my son isn't representing me and he's gonna get beat. But I do know that my sons are there and they're taking care of them because they're, they're doing the wishes of their father. And so um, 
I hope that answers all of that. Um, all right, I think that is. If you guys have any other questions, pop them in. I love, I love chatting with you all, and I think this is good that we can actually have a, a place that we can chat on this stuff. Okay, heading in to verse two. And see, they were bringing him a paralytic lying on a bed, and Yahushua, seeing their belief, said to the paralytic, take courage, son, your sins have been forgiven. Okay, yeah, and this is one of these things right here. And this is where the Pharisees and the Sadducees, this, this, these, this sentence, right? Your sins have been forgiven. Um, this is stuff they have never heard before. They don't understand who Messiah is. And they, what they say in three, and see, some of the scribes said to themselves, this one blasphemies, right? And if you didn't know, and if you were unable to, to read the scriptures and understand the prophets, and you didn't know that the son of the most high came and was saying things like this, um, you're going to be very, very upset. And they were. Okay, four. And Yahushua knowing their thoughts, said, why do you think wickedness in your hearts? For which is easier to say, your sins have been forgiven, or to say, arise and walk. But in order for you to know that the son, the bin of Adam, possesses authority on earth to forgive sins, he then said to the paralytic, rise, take up your bed, and go to your house. And he rose and went to his house. Do we have anything in the chat? No. Okay. So this is, a, this is an incredible thing, right? This is Messiah. This is the word made flesh walking among the people. Things like this we don't understand. We, we don't understand how out of nowhere sins can be forgiven by the son, right? But we know the son is our representative. If there is a legal presence for us uh, uh, in the face of the father, it is going to be the son. And this is, this is the understanding that when the kingdom comes, our Messiah, our king, our leader is going to be the son of the creator. That's who's going to be running this show. Um, and this is, this is why it's important that we understand that we know what, the, what our Messiah is even talking about. Okay, uh, eight. Praised Elohim, who had given such authority to men. And as Yahushua passed on from there, he saw a man called Matanyahu sitting at the tax office. And he said to him, follow me. And he rose and he followed him. And it came to be as Yahushua sat at the table in the house that see many tax collectors and sinners came and sat down with him and his Talmudian, which are disciples. And when the Pharisees saw it, they said, Talmudian, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? And Yahushua hearing this said to them, those who are strong have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire compassion and not offering. For I did not come to call the righteous to repentance, but sinners. This is a uh, huge, huge stuff, right? These are things that um, doesn't make a lot of sense. When you guys read the book of the Nazarene, um, Messiah is always getting messed with, right? These aren't, th we don't have a lot of the exact stories. And in fact, we don't even know why people like Matthew and people like uh, Kepha, Peter, when, when they heard from the, sh the, the shores to come and follow me, why those people would just take what they had and they would just go follow. We don't, we don't understand Hebrew culture enough or in the entire situation to actually know what that means. But Messiah is very clearly here for the sick, right? That's the same, and this is the same lesson that we all have, right? You're not going to find those who need um, our creator sitting amongst those who, who are close to you, right? It's usually the people that you walk by, the people who, uh, the, the waitress in, in the restaurant with tears in her eyes who, who you know there's something wrong with her and you know you should be saying something. You should sit down and pray with her and, and, and help her. And those are the sick. Those are the people and they're all around us, every single one of them. And we have to be strong enough. We have to be courageous enough to be that same kind of person that we, we care about people. We desire compassion, right? And it reminds me of, of our creator where he says, I, I want obedience and not sacrifice. And people, people just don't understand what that means. What that means is, is our creator wants us to obey. He wants us to be an in covenant people. You do not become an in covenant people when you think that the laws of our creator are gone and you don't care about them because that doesn't happen. Nowhere in scriptures does that ever say that the, the laws are gone. It just doesn't say that. Okay, continuing on. Um, Cindy does have a question, but I'll have you, I'll ask you after we okay. finish this. Okay, where are we at, anyone? We are all 14. 14, all right. Then the Talmudian of Yochanan, John the, John the Baptist, John the Immerser, came to him saying, why do, why do we and the Pharisees fast often, but your Talmudian do not fast? 
Messiah says. And Yahushua said to them, Are the friends of the bridegroom able to mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the day shall come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they shall fast. And I will take it to the book of the Nazarene again, because Messiah very clearly says that if you're just fasting as a routine, if this isn't part of anything like a, a spiritual fine, then it's just simply a routine. It doesn't mean anything. If you're simply just doing something because everybody else is doing it and it doesn't have, um, you're not fasting for the right reasons, then you're, you're fasting for, for no reason at all. Okay, continuing on, 16. And no one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment for the patch pulls away from the garment and the tear is made worse. Messiah uses this over and over and over this, this, um, this particular piece. Neither do they put new wine into old wineskins or else the wineskins burst and the wine is spilled and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine in fresh wineskin and both are preserved. Now, when you get over to the, the King James version of this, this is uh, uh, years and years ago, people uh, believe that there's this thing called the Mandela effect. They believed, and part of their reasoning of this uh, so-called Mandela effect was that everybody who's never read the Bible all of a sudden decided that this particular verse right here, because in the King, it talks about putting new wine into bottles, right? And everybody's like, oh, there were no such thing as bottles back in that day. And so everybody's like, well, this is the Mandela effect and blah, blah, blah. This, But when you actually look at the translations, I, it was in the king, it was always bottles. And they, they didn't use bottles back then, right? We're talking about when they're talking about wineskins, we're literally talking about skins of animals that they put this in. And the process of this is you can't use these wineskins over and over because in the process of fermentation, that wine and those wineskins get very, very big and then they get small and they, they go through a whole process. And if you were to put wine into an old wine skin, then that skin would be all hard and flaky. And when that wine expanded in there with the fermentation process, it's gonna blow out everywhere. It's gonna, go, it's gonna be a mess. And so that's what Messiah is talking about right here. All right, what you have, Mr. Cole? Uh, Sarah, she says, what is your opinion on when and how we should fast? You answered half of my question not to do it on a schedule. So thank you for that. Well, we fa fasting is going, there's biblical fasts and there is a, um, you know, there's the day of, um, the, the day of atonement and it doesn't technically say too fast, but it says afflict your souls. Um, as far as there, there's a lot of people that do biblical fasts and they will follow that routine. Fasting is one of those things that this is, uh, something between you and our creator, right? This is something that, uh, is something that you're doing for uh, a reason. You're doing it for a process. You're doing it for support a, a reason. If it's just something that is a routine thing that doesn't mean anything, that's what Messiah says. As far as biblical fast go, um, what do we have? We know there's just there's, there's there's a couple, right? I don't think we have I don't think we have like a a fast. I do know that certain people will do it. I do know that um, the Jews have it in there. They actually have like uh, days and times and things like that. They they completely fast. Um, so I, I, I don't exactly have days on this, on the schedule. I, I, there's just a couple in, in scriptures that it is, but if you want to fast and you're fasting for Yah and you're fasting for issues, you're fasting for reasons, you can do that anytime, right? Stay in prayer, stay in fasting, and you will see mountains being able to be moved. And if nothing else, uh, it's definitely a spiritual, uh, experience, especially, I, I don't know how long as a fast I fasted like 10 or 11 days before. I think I did like half a month one time. And uh, after the first four or five days, it gets really uh, incredible with what happens and, and the, the body doesn't actually even need the food that it always gets. And so um, that's an amazing thing. And we should all obviously be fasting, uh, but I don't think that it's set on a schedule. So I don't know if that, uh, it's, you guys in the comments have something or you guys have scheduled dates or something. I mean, definitely let's talk about this. I, I don't have scheduled dates per se. Uh, came from the Mormon cult, so every first Sunday was a fast day. Yeah, um, yeah, that's not you know that that's the, the Mormons. That's a, that's a very funny religion of all things. You know, it's a uh, most people don't know that um, the leader Joseph Smith was actually a Freemason, and so there was a tremendous amount of Freemasonry um, put into this. Uh, for those who do not know about the Mormon funny religion, very very funny. Um, they have their their doctrine and covenant, the doc. They have their Book of Mormon, which I called the bomb. And they also had the uh, words of wisdom, which I called the wow. And I did a lot of studying with a lot of Mormons, uh, a lot of time, way back when I was a youth. I went through all their stuff. I went through all their little seminary stuff. I was like seeking stuff. So I 
I know a lot about that religion, but I don't remember the fasting. So that must have been like uh, beyond where, where I was studying that. But yeah, that's, a, that's one uh, cult of a religion, completely an abomination, a satanic religion. But I would say that with every single religion that you call a religion that is satanic. Um, the only possible thing that you would ever get out of any kind of religion is possibly your eyes being opened that you need to get out of that religion and go seek the creator. That's the only thing you could possibly do. And maybe sitting around a whole bunch of what they call Jack Mormons or Jack Christians, the guys that are, you know, are just, uh, <laughs> that's the thing is, is the Mormons have this, this, this fake reputation of being like these goody two shoes. And I'll tell you, hanging out with the Mormons there, they're like everybody else. They're absolutely not poor keepers. Same as Christians, right? It's a day. It's a dangerous religion. When you have a religion without rules and regulations, it becomes very, very dangerous. Okay. Let's continue on. Matthew 9. And no one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch pulls away from the garment, and the tear is made worse. Very, very true. For anybody that's done any kind of sewing at all, that, that is great, great advice right there, right? Or uh, understanding. Neither do they put new wine in wineskins, or else, I guess I already read this. I'm going to do it again, though. Thanks, thanks for the help, fellas. Or else the wineskins burst, and the wine is spilled, and the wineskins are ruined. But they put new wine into fresh wineskins, and both are preserved. While he was saying all this to them, see, a ruler came and bowed down to him, saying, My daughter is dead by now, but come and lay your hand on her, and she shall live. And Yahushua rose and followed him, his Talmudian too. And see, a woman who had a flow of blood for 12 years came from behind and touched the seat of his garment. For she said to herself, If I only touch his garment, I shall be healed. Okay, before we go into that next part of this, this is an, an incredible um, Incredible story, right? So we have a, a, a wonderful woman who is has issues, right? She has had some problems and it just doesn't doesn't fix itself. She can't get any help. Nothing, nothing's working. And this is where the zitzits come in, right? This is where you have the correct translation. Guys, this is why one of the reasons we should be wearing zitzits, right? The right colored zitzits. Blue, a blue thread, not the white Jewish ones. Because people will know what you know by what you what you wear and this this could be something that people come up to you and go tell us about your zitzis and you can have this opportunity right here to to walk them through what the law statutes and commandments are the real reason messiah came right zitzits are a sign of the the people of yah and it's something we're told to wear numbers fifteen thirty eight is the commandment and so this is a an amazing thing that it's you know in all the other translations people say you know they, they she grabbed his clothes or the the corners of it it wasn't. It was the zitzis, right? All she had to do was reach up there and she grabbed that. And her faith was so strong that 22 says, Yahushua turned and when he saw her, he said, take courage, daughter, your belief has healed you. And the woman was healed from that hour. And when Yahushua came into the ruler's house, he saw the flute players and the crowd making a noise. And he said to them, go back for the girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed at him. You know, Messiah is the master of being laughed at and not, uh, not taking a billy club and beating them all because n most of us would not be okay with everywhere we go. People are laughing, cracking jokes. Um, the book of the Nazarene talks about Messiah. Everybody going, uh, why don't you heal yourself, healer? Why don't you go out there, doctor, and heal yourself? And that's, that's why he says, you know, it's, it's hard to be a prophet in, uh, in your own country because everyone thinks they know you and they don't. So Messiah is sitting there, and we have all these people, and the girl is dead. They're, they're making noise. They're, they're, people are crying. They have their weepers out there. And he says, she's not dead. She's sleeping. And they laughed, right? There we go. 25. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in and took her by the hand, and the girl arose. And this report went out into all the land, right? We, we hadn't heard of people. You know, we don't have a tremendous, before Messiah, we don't have a lot of people being raised from the dead. Who do we got? Uh, Elisha raised the one kid from the dead. Yep. Um, um, the one that touched, touched Elisha's bones came back from the dead. Yeah, Elisha's bones. Uh, but we don't know if he died immediately. We just know he popped up and, and came back to life. Um, it, there's not a tremendous amount of scriptures where people are brought back to life. And so we had all these people standing outside the house. Messiah goes in. They're all laughing at him. He kicks them out. And the girl rises up. Can you imagine this, right? You, you know what um, when people talk little villages, little towns. This went spreading out through all the lands. This is uh, amazing. Hey, Sister Barb wears seat seats. Nice. That's good. That's good. Hey, hey, the commandment is to wear seat seats. It doesn't say if it's under. It doesn't say where it's at. It says to wear seat seats. And so 
Um, Sarah asks, are Zed seeds only for men, or are they for both sexes? It's for the sons. It's for the sons of 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 Yah, so, sons people. and daughters, right? The commandment is for all of us, and you will find these people that are like, oh, women should not wear Zed seeds, and I don't find that anywhere. The commandment is sons of Yashrael, sons and daughters of Yashrael are to wear zit seats. And it is a, uh, we've been doing it now, I don't know how many, like a decade, seven, eight years. It's been a long, long time. And we have had more encounters with people that have become lifetime friends or, or associates because we wear them out there. When we first came down here into this third world country, um, we went to this little market and we had ZZ on and immediately we had these other people come up to us and, and now we've known these people for like 10 years. So it has been a very, very long time and ZZ seats are, um, they're an amazing thing. And the, the, the Judaism actually makes their clothes. So these things go uh, like they can taper them to the inside of this. Um, I've never found anything like that in scriptures. It says wear them on the four corners of your, of your clothes, of your, of your trunk. And so we have what we, we call a ZZ belt. And it's just a webbed belt that you hook the, the you hook the zits into, and so it's super fast. I don't I don't leave my house. I don't I don't go anywhere without my zits on. None of us do. We all wear our zits, and always. And every time I end up like forgetting them or doing something, I, I'm like, man, I might be in danger here. I don't got my zits on. You know, it feels like I'm out of covenant. But um, our creator knows, and so yeah, zits seats are for men and they're for women, and they are for the children of the Most High. Okay. Um, yeah, protection says you are yacht. And and that's it. Absolutely. And and um that's that's what we want to be, right? We want to look different than the world, taste different than the world. We don't want to be the world. And zit seats are one of those little itty bitty tiny things that will start start the separation from 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 this world. Okay. 25. All right. Yeah, Z seats are like a wedding ring. Absolutely, no doubt. Ab without a shadow of a doubt. That is that is it. That is it. No, that is the best best line I think I've seen all day long because that is absolute truth. It is like a wedding band, right? We are Yaws, you know, and, and again, it's not, it's not a whole bunch of colors. Like the, the, the Judaism has only whites, right? They only have white in their tassel because they said they can't get blue, but the commandment is a blue tassel. It's a blue thread. And so if we're putting white into our seat seats and wearing them around, we're breaking that commandment as well. But you you go and report, you know you go and talk to any Jews about that they they're like they'll I got to go talk to the rabbi and the rabbi and they always come back like the next week and they're like well the rabbi says we don't have that color anymore we don't have whatever whatever we get that from and whatever anyway we live in a, a strange world okay let's continue on um, yeah, it helps us find each other too the last sheet yeah goes, actually it does it yeah. would that, and and you know that's one of the things when you go through scriptures. I've always come to the understanding that at the end of times, the people that are lost are going to be looking for those with blue tassels on, and they're going to say, take us to your Elohim, take us to the Messiah. And that's the, the, the beginning right there of opening scriptures and talking to them and, and beginning to, to do this work. And, you know, our creator is going to send these people in. It is our job to make sure that we are active in the field, that we are taking every last opportunity that we can that we can fish for men that we can seek those who are willing to find the kingdom it's it's up to us right and that's another thing in the book of the Nazarene that i found out is that when messiah talks about the, the hand of yah he uses people like he doesn't technically have to do it himself he uses all of those around him and we are the soldiers of the kingdom and if the soldiers of the kingdom are unwilling to go out and be courageous and to seek those and to be laughed at because our Messiah, our King, he's sitting here getting laughed at, right? He's getting scorned everywhere he goes. He's the most powerful man that has ever walked this world. And he's sitting there showing us the example that he didn't kick him in the head, right? They laugh at him. He, he, he probably looked at them with, with sadness in his eyes that they just don't understand. But that's who our example is. And that's why we have a Messiah so that we know how to walk this path. Okay, continue on. You have something? No, just Sister Barb said that she was at the market and didn't know this gal that was wearing them and they lived far apart and she saw that on her and knew that she was our sheep. Yeah, absolutely. Those those are y'all's people, right? Those are the commandment keepers. Just Find like them. like how Larry chased you through. Yeah, yeah. They, I, the people chased us all through these markets because of the seat seats. All right, continue on. Um, 25. 25. But when the crowd was put outside, he went in, took her by the hand, and the girl arose. Actually, 26. And this report went out into all the land. And as Yahushua passed on from there, two blind men followed him, crying out and saying, Ben Dawid, have compassion on us. So he's saying, Son of David, 
have compassion on us. And when he came into the house, the blind men came to him. And Yahushua said to them, do you believe that I am able to do this? They said to him, yes, Adonai, yes, master. Then he touched their eyes saying, according to your belief, let it be to you. And their eyes were opened and Yahushua strictly ordered them saying, see, let no one know. And again, we have all of these people and we've talked about this before. The Messiah t tells a lot of people, don't let other people know. And the first thing that any of us as human beings are wanting to do is when something, when we get healed, when we feel better, when somebody does something good for us, we want to tell others about that, right? And so these words probably fell on deaf ears, um, but they didn't find, they didn't fall on, on blind eyes. And so this is simply amazing. And this, this story right here, again, I got to bring up the book of the Nazarene because I have learned so much about this because one time Messiah is out there with all his disciples uh, you got some sound effects. You got that bang, right? Um, he's out there with all his disciples, right? And there was a, a what they said in the book was there was a very ugly man who was very, very ugly. And he just didn't look good. And the people are laughing at this ugly man. The ugly man is coming to Messiah. He's like, Messiah, Messiah. And these people are like, shut up, ugly man. Don't scare the master. Don't scare the teacher. At that point, Messiah turns around and brings this individual into the front of the, all these people, this really ugly man, right? And he says, why are you guys so ruthless to this man that has the spirit of Yah that shines way brighter than anyone out there, right? I learned something from that, right? I should not be judging people that I see. I should not be even having these thoughts in my head. I should be, every time I do that, I'm like, that guy's ugly or this ugly. I should be looking in the mirror and understanding that these people could potentially have the strength of the Ruach HaKodesh way stronger than I ever have. These people could be way closer to Elohim and to his son than I have ever been. And when we're judging people like this, the book of Nazarene says very clearly that there will not be a thought of evil that goes through our head that is not recorded that we will not have to discuss on another day in judgment. So we all need to take these people we judge as ugly and understand that in their hearts, minds, and souls, they are beautiful. They are far more beautiful than most of us. And these are the people that are the kingdom people. It's not going to be these beautiful, holly, weirdo, psychopath, Satanists that are making this stuff. It's going to be the broken sheep. It's going to be all of us who are willing to get on our knee and obey these laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator and find the better way to the kingdom. Okay. Continuing on. Um, gentlemen, anyone know where we're at? Okay, I got a 30 and a 31. 31. Okay, 31. But when they went out, they made him known in all the land. And as they were going out, see, they brought to him a, a man, dumb and demon possessed. And when the demon was cast out, the dumb one spoke and the crowds marveled saying, it was never seen like this in Yisrael. But the Pharisee said, he cast out demons by the ruler of the demons. And Yahushua went about all the cities and villages teaching in their congregation claiming the good news of the rain and healing every disease and every bodily weakness among the people. Guys, there's something we should absolutely discuss here, right? Because Messiah is always casting out demons. This is something that you have to understand. Now, we have this crazy guy that we, we call him the crazy guy because he just wanders the town. And we've seen him probably for about six or seven years. And he literally goes up and down and he's always like talking to himself, screaming, throwing stuff. I mean, the guy is, he's, he's really odd. I've always wondered if this dude is possessed by, by demons. I've always wanted to put hands on and, and try some, some something, but I don't know. But obviously from this story, this one who was mute, who couldn't even speak anymore, this was all caused by, by demonic activity, things of this nature. And so Messiah is getting jammed. He, people are like, oh, you can only cast out demons because you are a demon. You're casting out by the power of demons. And this is where Messiah always talks about a house divided. This is where you do not want to get into a debate with the creator's son, right? You're not going to hold any kind of weight, any kind of value. That's why most people, when Messiah thumped them, they didn't say a word. They had to go back to their little friends and they all had, as individuals, they didn't have any negotiating power. They did not have any sweat when it comes to the Torah made flesh. Okay. Let's continue on real quick on this. Now, one thing I did want to point out is the Messiah came. Now, we have all these religions, and everybody's waiting on the giant yellow school bus that says rapture on the side of it with Messiah driving the, 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 the bus, and everybody's in there eating their pork as they're driving off into the, into the heaven, right? That is truly what the Christians believe. Well, what did Messiah say? Well, Messiah said right here, he came, and he's proclaiming the good news of the rain. What rain are we talking about? 
Is this the rapture? Are we all going to heaven? Is this the reign of heaven he's talking about? No, this is the reign. This is Mount Zion. This is the new Jerusalem. This is the, the place Messiah and whatever few people there are, are going to be with him. He's not talking about the rapture. And so when the Christians are all sitting there just thinking they're, they're, they're living in sin like the, the greatest of the Gentiles and that somehow the creator of the universe who said, don't do these things, I don't want you to do them. And then his son said, depart from me, you who are doing this. Somehow they can never ever see the writing on the wall. Now, continuing on, on 36. And having seen the crowds, he was moved with compassion for them because they were weary and scattered as sheep having no shepherd. Then he said to his Talmudian, the harvest truly is great, but the workers are few. The harvest would send out the workers to his harvest. God, this is us. We are the workers. The harvest is amongst us. The people are out there, but nobody will ever come unless we are diligent farmers. If we aren't diligently farming the spiritual world here in this physical world, then we absolutely are going to be fishing for men. The entire point of the kingdom to come is that this is the good news. The reign of Elohim will be here soon. The reign of his son will be here soon. It is not going to be a reign that is bent in sin. We have rules. We will have regulations. If you do not know the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator, why would you ever be taken to a land where the laws, statutes, and commandments have to be followed? Where holiness, where the Ruach HaKodesh, where, where we need to be very, very amazing people. One last thing I want to touch on is another thing out of the book of the Nazarene. When, when he was talking to his disciples about John the Baptist, John the Immerser, Messiah said that every single person in the reign of the kingdom to come has to excel John the Baptist. That we have to do better than what John the Baptist did. And John the Baptist was the man. If you guys don't understand, the guy that was sitting in camel's hair and eating honey and, and preaching the, the way, the, 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 making the way straight for the, for the Messiah, that's who we have to excel in, my friends, when the kingdom comes. So this path is not something that is a, it's a set and forget. It's not a raise your hand. It's not a, just an easy thing. We have to work hard for this and the kingdom will be there for those who are working it. So guys, um, with that, I think that's the end of this. If there's nothing else in chat, um, what did Miss Cindy have back in the She thing? wanted to know what you would say to Catholics. What would you say to Catholics? I know how evil the religion is, but my son's grandma thinks I'm possessed because I won't praise the Mother Mary thing. Yeah, well, Mother Mary thing, um, I'm sure she was an absolutely wonderful woman. Uh, I don't think that the son of the Most High would come through anything other than an incredibly amazing woman. And the thing is, there's every religion, call it Catholics, Mormons, whatever, there's no... There's everything about it satanic. Let's go into a, a mass. Guys, I mean, that's like next to a black mass. So you're going to a mass. You're having people that are not real priests based upon the law, statutes, and commandments of our, our creator. And they will sit in a room and they will say, your sins have been forgiven. Say, say seven Hail Marys. Don't do it again. Uh, here's some penance. The entire religion of Catholicism is completely satanic and is based on Satan's ways. But all religions are there is no religion that i would not deem as satanic and again the only thing that religion could possibly do is hopefully open your eyes that everybody around you in this so-called religion is not doing what scripture says anything yeah, else one more thing this is from brian he says in matthew 7 21 23 brother jason i had someone tell me that i'm misunderstanding it and says that messiah is talking about people before in 15. Uh, 20, what is it? Seven, what? 21, 23. Uh, yeah, this is, this is, don't get me going on this one, Brian. This is absolutely the Christian conundrum right here, right? The Christians, I've heard this before too. The Christians are like, oh, this applies to other people. This does not apply to Christians at all. They tell them that it was to the people in 15. It was to the people in 15, the people in 15, but we are, be aware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are savage wolves. No, because it continues on, right? Um, it's, 15 goes into this 16 goes by the fruits you shall know them so every tree that yields good fruit Th look this is this is all of us right this is not just false prophets that are, are dealing with this right by our fruits they will know us right the same kind of thing are we producing good fruits this is for everybody and this is the problem with taking scriptures out of context is you will say okay this applies to this this applies to this guys there was never 
numbers on these scriptures. There was never chapters on these scriptures. I don't know what year they actually put all this stuff together. Prior to this, it was all a giant scroll that was put together. And so if I, I don't see what they're saying on this, it's, it clearly says, let's, let's read this. It says, not everyone who says to me, Adonai, Adonai. He's, he's saying that not everybody who says to me, master, master. It, it says everyone. This is talking, this is not talking about the dudes in 15, right? 15, the false prophets aren't everyone. If you're talking about false prophets, those are someone. But now we're talking about, sorry, about everyone. And it says not everyone who says to me, master, master, right? You have how many Christians out there that say, Lord, Lord? How many say out there, master, master? Not everyone who says to me, master, master, shall enter into the reign of the Shemaim, right? Not everyone who says it. But he who is doing the desire, the will of my father in the Shemaim. Are you obeying the laws, statutes, and commandments? That is the desire of the creator of the universe is that you follow his ways. Because many shall say to me in that day, Master, Master, have we not done? Have we not nabbied? Have we not prophesied in your name? Have we not cast out demons in your name and done many mighty works in your name? And I shall say, declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who work lawlessness. People need to understand basic uh, English, right? We have things like everyone, everybody, someone, him, her, right? These are all talking to all of us. Everyone is all of us, right? We have an entire set of religion right now that says just these things. You have all of these um, these these Christians that have these, uh, what is that thing that Diane goes to all the time? The uh, deliverance. Oh, the deliverance. They have all these deliverance conferences, right? where they, these Christians go and they think that they actually have power over demons um, when they're using wrong names and they're using all of this stuff, right? Guys, it's all about the entire scriptures from the front to the back is about obedience. Will we be obedient or will we be lawless? And Matthew 7 very clearly says to everyone, this is not just the false teachers, this is absolutely everyone, depart from me, you who work lawlessness. So for anybody that doesn't care about what the laws, statutes, and commandments of our creator say, verse 23 is your final sentence. It's the last thing you're gonna hear before you're shipped away to a place that you can never get out of where there is gnashing of teeth and it's just a horrible demonic end for all the existence and there's no way out. I've never seen in scriptures anywhere that you get out. I've had people argue with me that the creator of the universe isn't going to doom everybody. But the creator of the universe gave us all 120 years. And it is by our fruits that our creator will know us. And so we have this path and we got to we gotta go. Okay. Hold on. What do we got? The grand says choosing a president. Yes or no? Part of coming out of her, my people? Yeah, don't, absolutely don't vote. When you guys vote, you are voting and you are becoming complicit with it. Which is another reason I say that if you are able to not pay taxes... And again, I'm not saying anything against the law because there are no laws on the U.S. books that you actually have to pay income taxes. That is something that we do voluntarily, and the people who are able to get around it can figure this out. Guys, we, we um, what was the question again? That was it. That was it. Yeah, so. Coming out of my people. Coming out of Coming out of, yeah, don't vote for people. I mean, what happens? I mean, you, it, it, they're both a controlled opposition. They're both the same sides of the exact same coin. It doesn't matter if you have a bumbling old timer that is a the it's all theater guys they everything have the same puppet master. they have the same puppet master they have the satan runs the entire show there's not a good side and a bad side there's not a side that's a little less worse than the other side it doesn't matter who is selected you guys don't have anything to do with the actual election so don't be a part of that fraud don't be a part of that scam uh, and you don't want anyone they present to you our our president is messiah yahushua the uh, creator of the entire universe is our uh yahuwah and those are who we serve and we will serve to the death till till the death. And so with that, guys, I think we have it. Much, I have one thing. What do you got? I guess not. I want to say about the scriptures. They will be shipped on Tuesday. Oh, okay. right. Arriving Tuesday, Any, so they be shipped. Sh we, the train has arrived in Tennessee on Tuesday. Wednesday, they should be sh uh, shipping out Yah's scriptures. And so, um, anybody that's ordered, you should have it by the end of the week or the following week. Yep. So they're on their way. So they're all heading out. Um, prisoners are all getting them. There's going to be a massive load. It is an amazing time. Finally made it. So, guys, by next Shabbat, uh, hopefully a, a lot of you guys that are, have ordered these will have these. And uh, I guess that's it. That's it. So, much love to everybody. Jade, will you please um, 
Send us out. Yahweh Baruch you, and God you. Yahweh may his face shine upon you, and show favor to you. Let his face upon you, and give you peace. Let his shall put mine upon you, and I shall, and I myself shall barak them. Okay. All right, guys. Here we go. We're in the heavens. bless you and keep you. May his light forever shine on you. May Messiah Yahushua be a, a king to the kingdom to come for all of us. And may we all see each other on the other side as faithful, obedient children of the Most High. Shabbat Shalom, everybody. Shabbat we love Shalom. you. Shalom. Bye, guys.